Speaking of big butts, right? Eagles have a lot. Jaguars have a lot. Yes, they do. Two good defensive teams. Got a, uh, some guys on the offensive line too. So. You kind of wanted to dive deeper into the Jaguars. We did that last week, too, and looked at Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson's offense, and you really liked a lot of the things you saw there, and then he totally ruined it this past week, although the wet conditions seemed to have an effect on on Trevor Lawrence. But let's start on the other side of the ball because it was the Eagles showing the ability to come back against a pretty good defense, I, th- I think an above-average defense in the league. And so that, I think that was impressive, right? Yep. And the Eagles have been impressive this year. Um, so are you okay with starting with the – Eagles offense here yeah, and what sure. you saw here. Yeah. So Eagles offense, Jalen Hurts trying to rub it in your face for leaving him off the top 40 list. The <laughs> yeah. Eagles fans are trying to rub it in your face. They never forget. Well, he was in there this year, though. But uh, he was not high enough. That's, no. that's, uh, I'm learning that already. Creeping, creeping up there. Um, the ability to come back. The ability to do it with the run. Again, we've seen that before. Dominate in the run game against a, a team that – I don't think a whole lot of other teams are going to be able to run the ball as successfully against. Um, were you impressed when you took a closer look at the Eagles offense? I was. I was. I won because just their, first off, their ability to adjust, you know, and the game wasn't pretty early on and they still like just show grit. They don't panic or anything like that. And then they adjust properly. I thought here, here was the thing that, that jumped out to me early on in the football game. I felt like they came out going, they're going to try to stop the run. So let's throw it. And the Jags came out going, I think they're going to come out throwing, so let's play pass defense and not let them get rolling that way or we're going to be in trouble here. Hmm. So they played pass defense early, and I thought the Eagles were a little stubborn in their first few drives of keep throwing the football. And where you saw it kind of change a little bit was when they finally said, okay, all right, life is hard. They're pretty good up front, and they're pretty good coverage, and they're playing coverage defenses. we got to start to run the football a little bit. And to me, that was when you know the game really changed a little bit as far as the Eagles and the momentum that way. Um, you know, uh, I know we're going to talk about the Jags offense. But yeah, the, the defense gave them a little bit of a jump-off point with some of the turnovers and you know, the fourth down stops to kind of get them going that way. But I think that was the thing that, you know, jumped out to me more than anything. They got the run game going and then dominated with it. And I don't know, Fadu Kasi, he must have got hurt during the football game because he didn't play much after early on. And they, yeah, so something must have happened there. And they wore out the defensive tackles for the Jacksonville Jaguars in the running game. The defense ends, you, you can't wear them out. Walker and Allen are studs. Defensive tackle, Roy Robertson-Harris, he's a good player. He's not a run-stopping, run-stuffer type of guy. He got pushed around a little bit, and so did the rest of the group there You know that was playing. And, and that was really where the game turned, in my opinion, was the running attack. And then once they got that going, Jalen makes his handful of big throws to really now you go, oh gosh, they got it going and where do you stop it from there he put him behind the eight ball a little bit with a pick six early on to your guy andrew cisco who you noted looks really fast really fast. The other way, which no he, doubt about he it he definitely did you yep. said bad throw bad decision there but from that point forward a lot of a lot of running a lot of screens quick passes kind of a lot of the same notes it seems like from the the chiefs game plan almost it was just like short stuff quick stuff yeah um what'd you see from hurts well the hurts played really good i mean his running the screens Run game overpowering, and you know, like I said, versus the pass looks, that was a real thing there. Um, but you know, I thought really after that first mistake, maybe forced another ball or two. Other than that, it was it was a pretty clean football game. It was, and then you know, they get them into okay, now we're running the ball with a little success here, and you know they. Okay, we got a one-on-one. We got a little play action. We got a slant here to A.J. Brown, and they start to carve you up that way, and they pretty much start to have their way with whatever they want to do there. But Hurts looked good. It was not a Hurts game to where you come away just going, oh, man, he was the showcase. The showcase of the game was their running game. That was like the best pure running game I think they've showed all year. You know, minus – you know, hurts big runs or scrambles or that way. Truly with the running back between the tackles was really, really impressive yeah, that way. 134 yards for Miles Sanders. So can they, I mean, if they can do that against the Jaguars, you noted maybe they had some injuries uh, on that defensive front, but the offensive line yeah. for the Eagles has been good for a while. Right. But we've been saying that with the Colts too. And we saw it with the Dallas Cowboys. At a certain point, sometimes those guys, Jason Kelsey has been around a long time, 
fade a little bit or yeah. fall off. I know. No indication of that so far? Well, not from him. And the, the good thing is, I mean, they drafted a center in the second round to take over. That's where they, they've almost, you know, Lane Johnson's nowhere near the end. Yeah. Malata left tackles nowhere near the end. The guard, Landon Dick, uh, Dickerson, they, he said it's just the second year out of Alabama. He's there for a while. Isaac Siamolo, Siamolo, excuse me, I'm sorry, I know I'm butchering that. You know, he's still got a number of good years left from him that way. Uh, so that's where you just look at it and just go, no, there's no weakness across the board. It really isn't. And, you know, I, I said it, just that, that to me was the big thing. It's like the game got to 14 7, right? Where Hurts on that one drive, they, you know, they, the, the make it 14 7, all right? He hits, you know, a little screen to 11, hits a pass to Goddard, and then it's like, here we go, all right? And then the big plays of that drive, let me just explain this to put a little context sure. in it, because they had third and goal at the 16, right? And they let Hertz scramble up the middle two times in a row for a touchdown. And Hertz, I mean, the second one to lower his shoulder the way he did against, you know, Devin Lloyd was very impressive. I mean, it really is. What a tough sucker he is. Definitely. All right. But that was the big thing. And then it seems like on the next drive, they were like, okay, wait, we're, what are we doing? Why are we trying to keep passing the ball here? Let's start running the football. And at the end of the half, you know, I don't know, Pete, I thought I heard you say a number. I mean, it, it was almost like they ran the ball every play. They... The Gotsis, the D tackle, uh, Hamilton 52, they were absolutely getting dominated at defensive tackle. That's where I asked, like, where is Fadu Kasi? And I think Roy Robertson Harris was out right. for the drive, just taking a break. And then that, along with, you know, some of the moving parts they have behind the line of scrimmage. I think confused the linebackers a little bit at times where they were supposed to be in this gap, but, oh, wait, the running back went this way or this guy went this way and they take the wrong step and they're out of position, and that caused them a little bit. But, yeah, the O-line took over the football game, I guess is what I'm really trying to say more than anything here in this, in this one for the Eagles. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Farid, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Peace out.